In this video, we're going to show you how to install the radiator on your Nissan Versa, located right behind the front grill. We'll go ahead and remove our air intake tube here. We're going to use our trim tool and remove the button right here that's holding this in place. There's normally two here, but ours is missing one. If you have both, remove both. I'm going to lift up on this. I'm going to also remove the silencer box over here. Just gently pull up. And then the tube goes back to the air filter box. I'm going to wiggle that out. Let's go ahead and remove the forward portion of our air intake. I'm going to pull up on the box right here. Use our trim tool. We want to disconnect this back portion right here. Now I did grab a catch can or a bucket here to go ahead and catch any residual fluid that we're going to drain out of this reservoir when we pull it up. Right on the front side here, there's a plastic retainer tab that's flexible. You're going to push that back towards the engine. At the same time, pull up. That'll allow this to come up. Bring this on over to your catch can. You're going to disconnect this here. Sometimes it might be easier just to open up the cap. Drain out that fluid. Now that we have a reservoir removed and we have it drained out, that's going to reduce the risk of us spilling any fluid around the engine. Go ahead and set that aside. We're going to remove the hose off of the radiator here. We're going to disconnect this hose here from the radiator. It's going to make it easier for us to pull up the cooling fan up and out. Now we did put a drain bucket underneath to catch any residual coolant that may be coming out of this here. Pinch that. And give this a little twist. Break that free. Make sure that coolant or the, the bucket is underneath. And we're just gonna let a little bit dribble out here. Go ahead and grab a securing strap. We're just gonna tuck that up out of the way and anchor that someplace else to hold that hose up. Next, we wanna go ahead and disconnect the electrical connector to the cooling fans on the driver's side of the fan. Electrical connector up top right here. You wanna push in on this tab. Sometimes it can be stuck. So I like to use a pair of pliers here. Just be careful. You don't wanna crack the plastic. So gently pinch and just wiggle that off. Next one is a gray connector down below. It's a large connector. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna push in on the top of this tab and pull up on the connector. We're gonna use our trim tool to go ahead and pop this little plastic retainer off of that electrical strap here. that off to the side. On the top of our fans is going to be two 10 millimeter bolts. One on the driver's side, one over on the passenger side right here. Let's go ahead and loosen and remove those. Now that we have those two out, go ahead and set them aside. We have a wiring harness right here that comes through and it's keeping us from pulling the fan out. We're going to go ahead and remove the harness with this plastic retainer. And in the mirror, you can see 
There's a little black tab in the center of that metal bracket and there's a little arrow pointing to it. We're gonna use a pick or a small pocket screwdriver to go ahead and push in on that and then slide this whole harness retainer off of that bracket. Now this harness comes around to this back harness here. There's a retainer right here. We're gonna use our trim tool to release this back harness here. All right, go ahead and pop that off and pull that aside. And while you're pulling that aside, you can grab that harness and pull that off. Across the top of the radiator here, we have a plastic cover over the top of the support, the core support. So we're going to use our trim tool and we want to remove these plastic retainer buttons. I'm going to do this across both sides, pop all these out. Once we have all these removed, go ahead and pull up on this cover and set it aside. On our upper radiator support, there's going to be two 12 millimeter bolts here on the passenger side and two more on the driver's side. I'm going to go ahead and use our ratchet. We did spray these down with some rust penetrant. Now this bolt here is behind our washer reservoir. We just popped a little plastic button out of the washer reservoir there. And we'll just eliminate that that nut just popped off there of the bolt. And do the same on the driver's side. We have a 10 millimeter bolt here for our headlight assembly. Just gonna loosen and remove that. So once you get this one out, I'm gonna repeat the process for the passenger side. I'm gonna remove our radiator cap. This is going to help the radiator drain once we pull that lower hose off the bottom. On our lower radiator hose, we have a clamp right here. Going to use our pliers, open that up and slide that clamp back. Once we have that back, you want to go ahead and grab that hose and give it a twist here to try and break it free. And if it doesn't want to break free, we can use a pair of large adjustable pliers. Break it free and we're going to slowly twist that back. Now coolant is going to come gushing out of this here. We have a drain bucket. Make sure you're wearing safety glasses. Now you can control the drainage here by letting this go a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
when the majority of that coolant drained out, go ahead and disconnect that hose altogether. You're gonna stand back for a few minutes and let that continue to drain out. Just to the left of the lower radiator hose, we have another hose here. We're gonna use our pliers, pinch that hose clamp and slide that back. And then there's one way over on the driver's side over here. We're gonna do the same for this one here. This hose clamp is in rough shape. Now, if you're inspecting your clamps and they look rusty or they look like they're going to break, you definitely want to source some alternate clamps and make sure you install them on your installation. This one here is just rusted beyond use. So we're simply going to take that one off. Make sure you're wearing safety glasses when working underneath the vehicle. Now we're not gonna pull these hoses off yet because for recycling purposes, we need to keep our oils and our antifreeze separated. So we're not gonna pull these transmission cooler lines off yet. Just gonna remove the clamps. Once the radiator is done draining, we'll go ahead and switch out our bucket to an oil bucket. There we go. We can use our hose pliers here. What we're gonna do is basically just break those free. Just twist them, I'm not gonna remove them. There we go. Now with the proper drain bucket underneath to catch this fluid here, let's go ahead and twist off this hose. Now if you happen to have a plug available for these here, you can go ahead and cap off that line. Let's go ahead and disconnect the one on the driver's side. Now at this point we have our two hoses for the transmission disconnected and capped off. We have our lower radiator hose removed. Let's go back up top and we'll go ahead and work on pulling the radiator out. At this point here, our bracket is loose. It's still anchored in the center here, so we just have to pull this up and disconnect the radiator out of these rubber grommets. Pull it up, tilt that radiator. Now coolant is going to come out of that radiator. It's just some residual. So we do have some mats and a bucket underneath. Go ahead and pull that straight up and out. Bring it over to a bucket and you can go ahead and drain any residual coolant that might be in that radiator. We wanna go ahead and lower our radiator down into position. And there's key things you wanna pay attention to. On both the left and right hand side, there's gonna be these plastic posts as well as this one in the middle. These fit into the rubber grommets at the base. Let's go ahead and lower this down in a position. All right, now at this point, the bottom is in position. We're gonna lift up on the support a little bit and we're gonna tip these back and put the upper post into these upper grommets. Our radiator is now in position. Let's go ahead and secure the upper support. I'm gonna install our bolt here right by the washer reservoir. And get the other bolt started here. Go ahead and install our headlight bracket bolt here. We have these three started. We're gonna do the same on the driver's side. Now that we have all six of these bolts started, we can go ahead and snug those down. 
once that bottoms out, give it a little bit more. Pretty much you want to make these tight. Once that bottoms out, not even a full quarter turn before that's feeling pretty secure. This bolt here, we're just securing plastic to the bracket. You don't want to over tighten this. You can crack the headlight bracket. So once that is bottomed out, just a little bit more, not even a full quarter turn, we can resecure our washer reservoir here. I want to get that base installed first. And as you use your trim tool, because there's not a lot of room to get that in, push that in and then get that center locked in. Install your lower radiator hose. Move your clamp down in a position. You can grab your pliers. You want to remove these rubber caps. Do that for that one there and the other side over here. Now our clamps here, they're pretty rusted. Now's the time to replace them if you can. If you don't have them and your clamps are in good condition, it's fine to reuse those. We're going to install new clamps. Remove our plug and push this on. Now if you have clamps, just use your pliers and slide that back in a position. We're just going to tighten up our new clamps. of the clamp still on here. Install the upper shield here. Once we have this in place, we can get install our plastic push pins. Go ahead and install your cap. Now we lower our radiator fan down in a position. There's two tabs on the bottom that are going to go into the two tabs on our radiator. We want to make sure that those line up properly. Let's go ahead and lower this down.
at this point here, our fin is lowered down into our radiator. Install our two 10 millimeter screws to secure this in place. I'm not gonna tighten this one down yet. Install the screw on the other side, on the driver's side here. And it's nice if you don't tighten down the other side, it gives you some adjustability to lift and lower the cooling fan to line that up properly. Now we can go ahead and snug these down. Just once that bottom's out, just a hair bit more. We don't wanna crack or cause any damage to the plastic here. Do the same here. Once that screw is bottomed out, that's pretty much it. Pull that harness off that we had tucked away. We're gonna install our lower connector first. Go ahead and line that up. Go ahead and push it down all the way. Give it a little wiggle, make sure it's secured in there properly. Line this one up here. Push that in. I'm going to push it in and you'll feel it lock into place. Install our upper radiator hose. Go ahead and adjust the clamp here and slide that over and line that up release that. Install the hose on the radiator. Lower our expansion tank down inside. And when we lower this down, there's a tab on the bottom that fits into the cooling fan. I'm gonna lower that down. And on the top side, there's two tabs here that lock into our radiator. So there's three points of securing this. it down into place. We want to go ahead and top off our tank here. So we're going to open this up. Now on the side there is a min and a max. At this point here the engine is cold. We're going to fill it up to the max using the proper coolant for the vehicle. Go ahead and fill this up. on the cap. Install our air intake components here. Install your two plastic clips on the front. Our original push pins were damaged, so we just had to source a couple new ones. Remove our radiator cap. We're gonna install our fill funnel here. Go ahead and add the coolant. As you're doing this here, you want to go ahead and double check underneath the vehicle. Check the hoses and clamps. Make sure there's no leaks. Now at this point, we're going to go ahead and start up the vehicle. We're gonna let it run for a few minutes. We're gonna put the heat on high. We wanna go ahead and let that thermostat open up to circulate that coolant through the engine and make sure that that fluid is topped off. We're gonna turn our heat all the way on. Put the fan on high. 
I'm gonna let the vehicle run for a little bit. As you can see, some of the bubbles are working their way through. The water pump is circulating the coolant through the engine a little bit. Once that thermostat opens up, it's gonna to continue to consume some of that water that we have added to this here. Now that we've run the vehicle for a little bit and the system has purged and burped up any air pockets, we now go ahead and remove our funnel system here. And install our radiator cap. At this point here, you can go ahead and take the vehicle for road test. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.